Hello everyone, my name is Max and on my channel we look at current and future BJJ trends. If you want to be on top of the current new, overpowered moves, sequences and systems, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. If you get to the end of the video and you enjoyed yourself, please drop me a like as it supports the channel. Thank you very much. In today's video, we are going to look at the much requested inside camping guard passing positions. I will make a video at some point on outside camping too. With the intro out of the way, let's get started with what is guard passing camping for those who are unaware. The idea of the guard pass camping is getting past your opponent's foot line and positioning yourself in such a way where your opponent can't push with their legs anymore and just pull their knees to their chest. This is extremely fatiguing on the lower abdominal muscles, even if you're on all the gear in the world. As a result, you can chip away at your opponent's imaginary stamina bar like in a video game and fatigue them over time as you create an asymmetrical work rate between yourself and your opponent. This makes it easier to submit them or score. This originally took the form of north-south passing and things like hip and knee toriandos. History aside, what is inside camping? Inside camping is where you're still inside your opponent's guard and you position yourself in such a way that if your opponent doesn't support and carry your weight, you'll fall into half guard, a very compromised guard, or pass completely. The idea is, and this is really important, you put yourself in a guard passing position that does the work for you. It's not like you've gone for a one-off leg drag. You stick to a position and systematically tire them out over time. Now let's dive into section one with defining the first inside camping position, head low inside camping. Typically, you'll take a tripod posture with your head pushing down into the far shoulder up on the ball of your toes. This helps to generate pressure and push your opponents back to the mat, flattening them out. This always helps with forcing half guard and unlocking the knee shield. Your bottom arm will assist with a few options. It can square the bottom hip by pulling the leg or push it away to tire the lower abdominal muscles. It can restuff legs, post on the throat or become the overback grip too. The top arm and shoulder can pummel into an underhook, switch to a C grip on the top leg and switch to reverse grips on the torso as well. It's important to note some very important positioning of your inside leg. This isn't a knee slide and you don't want to give them access freely to your leg so it can become a reverse de la Hiva for them to start elevating you with. Which is why you typically want to bring your knee to their tailbone. This also helps with squaring the hips at the same time. The first main option we're going to look at is forcing half guard. Let's break down some forcing half guard in action. This clip is 7 minutes into the match and Gordon has already done a lot of work to tire out his opponent. You're going to see that his opponent has to constantly be framing him while trying to bring their knees towards their chest. As Gordon beats his opponent's bottom knee with his own, he shoots his head to the far shoulder and successfully flattens his opponent out in half guard. Our next main option is the overback. In this next clip, you'll see the combination between the overback and forcing half guard. His opponent is doing a good job of staying on his side and grip fighting. So now Gordon is going to build height and reach for his overback. His opponent has to respect this as it's very fatiguing and easy to force half guard from there. The first reaction his opponent does is to try and elevate Gordon away. He counters by sitting his weight backwards and posting on the floor. This explosion is tiring and compromises his opponent's top leg. The second reaction is to try and create extension, but Gordon has good bottom knee positioning which keeps him safe. Again, his opponent had to compromise his top leg positioning for this and use a lot of strength. The third and final reaction we will see his opponent even more compromise and have to resort to another off balance which also leads to another close half guard attempt by Gordon. It fails, but Gordon resets the camp and he has barely used any energy compared to his opponent. Let's take a look at this example of Gordon forcing half guard from the overback. He successfully got into the overback position and his opponent is balled up and trying to stay compact. Here he uses an ankle scoop to force his opponent's knee away from their chest and try to scoot his knee to the far hip. However, he loses his balance somewhat, but no worries, Gordon just resets the camp on an already tired opponent, B 
beats their frames and gets to his overback position. Just like in the previous clip with Galvao, his opponent has tried to go for their own overback, but Gordon has already countered it with his bottom knee into his opponent's hip. Now it's as simple as pressuring his knee to his opponent's far hip to secure the half guard and finish the pass. For the third main option, we're going to look at the shin pummel. This is a super common option you'll find yourself using from the inside camps. Your opponent won't be able to always keep their feet locked. This can be due to a few reasons. One of the main ones is, when you're forcing someone's body square, it will pop the lock of the knee shield. Additionally, it's hard to keep your feet locked and close to your chest at the same time. You aren't knee sliding through, but doing a windshield wiper motion with your leg to beat their bottom foot. What normally follows is a number of options. A pass, a turtle, they explode and tire themselves out even more, or maybe you just reset the camp again, should they recover their guard. This next shin pummel clip is from the finals of one of my matches. What's particularly interesting about this clip is how I let my opponent keep the wrist control the whole way through the transitions. First of all, I'm squaring my opponent's hips, making it easy to hit my shin pummel. Next, my opponent overcorrects by reaching for me with his top leg. I counter this by stapling his leg with my own. He tries to elevate me as I jump to the other side. The wrist control from earlier becomes my seatbelt and I finish the back take from here. Section 2, head high inside camping. So we're going to look at the body positioning and what makes it a camp. But before that, fun fact, I showed this to Ono Flanagan when I went to one of his seminars and he has been terrorizing his students with it ever since. Hip flexes get tired, but that, it's really satisfying. That video we put up on the sport passing did really well. Good details. Yeah, people you know, fucking love it. It's not even our idea. No. Shout out Max. Max, Max Armstrong. Armstrong, yeah. Good video too. Yeah. Uh, I hadn't figured out the names for it at that time. However, later on I did, and what was really nice, afterwards Gordon made a clip on his story confirming the names that I had figured out. Right now I just go, I just do high and low head inside camping. Owen adopted the name of Sprawling Pass for obvious reasons, so if you're ever watching his podcast with Charles Allen Price, this is what they're referring to. Now for the body positioning, when your head is high instead of a tripod, you're able to bring your hips into the pass in a sprawling motion. You want to make sure your feet are as hidden as possible and you need to make sure you're pressuring over your opponent's far shoulder. Pressuring into the far shoulder squares your opponent, making it easier to force half guard, just like in the first camping position. Again, we're going to look at the main options, and the first one is forcing half guard. I think this clip really showcases the pressure of this camp and how it can keep you quite safe too. You can see Gordon is effectively running and sprawling on his opponent at the same time, removing any frames from his body as he keeps creeping around the corner to keep his weight over the far shoulder. This little sweeping motion is important to learn as it helps you avoid pesky butterfly hooks too. You can see once his weight is fully over the far shoulder, his opponent's hips become completely square and Gordon can force half guard easily. The second main option is sprawling on the knee shield and the dilemma you're going to play here is do you square your partner's hips for half guard or do you smash them together this one basically speaks for itself but gordon is essentially putting so much pressure through his opponent's knee shield and his opponent is trying to create space but eventually he he just can't carry his weight after a while he beats the knee shield and shoots his knee to the far hip which is required for a strong half guard positioning the third main option you'll find yourself using is also the shin pummel. This is a great example of what people refer to as a wet blanket. You can see Gordon has established his positioning and is slowly working to square his opponent's hips for a half guard entrance. His opponent has to respond with a big movement, tries to keep his top knee close to his chest, but opens him up to a shin pummel and then an ankle scoop in order to finish the pass. Before we move on to section 3, let's hear a quick word from today's sponsor, X Marshall. They have top quality Jiu Jitsu gear, a massive range of options to choose from. X Marshall sponsors over 300 athletes of every level. Additionally, they have given away over $40,000 of gear in 2023 alone. They've quickly become the most community driven brand in the game. Use code BJ Armstrong to get 10% off at checkout. Thank you, X Marshall, for sponsoring today's video. And now, let's move on to section 3. Now that you're familiar with the camping positions and how to use them, let's move on to addressing the central problems you encounter with this style of passing. The first being the scoop grip. However, let's quickly address something important, and this is why Gordon's opponents will behave in certain ways. 
you need to learn about the history of what made Gordon dangerous. People used to commit fully to the scoop grip and normally try to enter deep half guard. Gordon had an excellent counter to this, and if your opponents fear you, they will hold back. As a result, he uses this technique less because they don't fully commit to deep half and it's fallen out of favour in the meta too. Additionally, I believe sometimes he either doesn't want to submit them too quickly or tire them out more to get a submission he's called. So that was like my main setup coming up into black belt. And then I started doing that and then people started realizing that if they shoot deep half guard on me, I would just finish with the back triangle so everyone stopped doing it and I was like, ah, well, here's my favorite setup gone. We're going to go through numerous examples of Gordon countering the scoot grip. I want to give you guys as many options as possible so you can overcome the problems early and quickly progress your jiu-jitsu. The first clip is a failed entrance against Pau Harris when he fully committed to the deep half. He gets very close to securing a Kimura grip. In the end, he still manages to secure the back take by countering his opponent's leg lock attempt. This is a very old clip where he can't quite wedge his arm into an underhook, so he pries open his opponent's elbow which gives him the space to secure his Kimura grip, and then he eventually takes the back. A common situation you'll find yourself in when attacking from the overback position, your opponent has a scoop grip and an underhook, but they are keeping a knee shield. This is actually quite bad for the person on bottom because they aren't fully committing to any attack and giving up a lot of limb exposure. As a result, Gordon is able to pummel into a Kimura grip and secure his triangle finish. Now, if their arm is completely hidden, you can always threaten the saddle entrance like Gordon does here in an old match against Yuri. Again, I think this is a good example of an opponent changing their behaviour based on the threats and what they know about their opponent beforehand. Let's look at a situation where Gordon's opponent is trying to heist off an underhook and a scoop. Gordon's hand posting helps to stop being off balance too much, but these next two points are really important. He puts his knee to his opponent's far hip, effectively a three quarter mount position, and cups his opponent's bottom elbow which he needs to build height. His opponent has compromised his top knee positioning so badly trying to get up, it results in Gordon being able to force half guard quite easily. Let's say now your opponent is able to get your weight into your rear leg and put you into outside ashy. Provided you keep forward pressure, this can be quite dangerous for your opponent as when you only have a scoop grip and your leg is entangled on one side, it creates a lot of back exposure. Gordon almost secures the back here, but settles for resetting the camping position instead. If you're able to secure strong upper body grips, you can look to sprawl off of their scoop grip as well, and this is quite a low risk option, which typically results in a pin. Early prevention to deal with off balancing from a scoop grip can be done by crossing your feet here. Furthermore, you can start attacking the pass by putting in a forearm cross face to begin flattening out your opponent as well. The next central problem you're going to encounter is half butterfly. And the first and simplest answer to this problem is by pulling out the hook by timing the moment your opponent pushes into you. Or you can threaten pushing it too far inwards for a smash pass and when they react, pull it back out into a knee shield again. Finally, for half butterfly, you can try to smash the knee inwards again, and then when they react by pulling it outwards and overcorrect, you can look to secure a chest on chest position and do passing from there. Section 3 will finish with a clip from Erno Flanagan. Oftentimes, when you're compromising someone's guard structure and decide to swap sides, this can result in opportunistic body lock entry. This is when they try and sit up defensively as shown here. For my favourite part of the video, section 4, where we're going to look at the original inside camper, the GOAT, Roger Gracie. In my opinion, the most overlooked and misunderstood part of Roger's game, and that's his passing. When watching some of these clips, just know that people's guard structure and reactions are slightly different for the times, and it's in the gi as well. If you know anything about camping positions and have trained in the gi, I can tell you firsthand, gi camping is horrible to be on the receiving end of. One day I'll do a full video on it, 
but it's still a topic that needs exploring. In the first clip, Roger is using head high camping with a reaction you'll sometimes encounter when your partner squares their hips. The interesting thing is this is gi camping, so you're constantly using interesting grips to climb the body and anchor yourself to your opponent. His goal is to create an angle on his partner's legs and put weight over their far shoulder as seen before. His opponent does a good job of keeping his knees towards his chest, but in the gi with the grips you can stay attached to your partner and use the grips as pivot points to look for leg drags. In this case, he does multiple. Something that doesn't often get mentioned is how good Roger was at leg drags. Once he gets past, he makes quick work of getting to his opponent's back as well. You'll see this quite often in Roger's matches, and that's how often he gets to the smash pass. His opponents at the time didn't use the high knee shield very much, and would often get caught out here. Roger was excellent at attacking the inversion, and would use sneaky grips to make sure when his opponent's uninverted, it would typically be into back exposure or other poor positions. His opponent is eventually able to recover a butterfly guard, but is still flattened out, and Roger is able to float and fall off his opponent's butterfly hook into a pass. This is a really cool setup he does in order to get into his head high camping position. He threatens to crush the knee in order to get a strong tight waist grip. His opponent is Marcelo Garcia, so naturally he does a good job of recovering his butterfly hook and begins sweeping Roger. However, Roger is prepared for this. His tight waist grip from earlier is used to overextend Marcelo and bring him into a turtle position, at which point he bails and goes back to guard, but it is made difficult by Roger threatening to reset the camps with smashes, so he tries to stay in this turtle position. From here, he jumps to the other side as his opponent uninverts, and he ends up in a leg drag position once again and has to defend his back. That concludes my breakdown on inside camping. I hope this helps answer some of the questions you had about this position, along with solving some of the problems you encountered too. I was also excited to highlight something about Roger, which I feel has gone quite under the radar and deserves praise. Don't forget to check out X Marshall and use code BJ Armstrong for 10% off at checkout. And thank you to Owen and Charles for shouting me out on their podcast, much appreciated. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.